Hey, here are over 200 collection logs you can get while working from home. Quick note, to me work from home means the task doesn't demand your time immediately, and you only have to click casually to be considered semi-efficient. If you'd have to take off complete focus from the task at any time just to work at your job, nothing bad will happen to you. So like Brimhaven Agility isn't here, because while it is 8 easy logs and it is kind of low intensity, if you reset the timer it's pretty annoying. This list is trying to be organized in a least effort per slot to a most effort per slot, so you can hopefully organize your work from home time that way. It wouldn't be an AFK collection log guide without Castle Wars. Just go to world 334 and enter whichever portal. If you enter the Guthix portal, it'll put you into the team with less people. When you get in Castle Wars, you have two minutes to go up this ladder, and then just find a spot to hide. Usually people hide behind the wall or the corner. Now you've got about 20 minutes to AFK so you can go take a shower or do your job or something I guess. Make sure you have your logout timer set to 25 minutes so you don't have to touch the game every 5 minutes. To get tickets you have to be in a game for at least 15 minutes. The losing team gets one ticket, the winning team gets three tickets, and a draw gets two tickets. However, there is a weird situation where if you draw and both teams have points, so let's say it was two to two, for some reason both teams will only get one point or one ticket, so the same as if you were losing. There's a couple methods to find the best team for Castle Wars. I like to do what I call the Peeping Tom method, where I'm just going to check each portal. So it put me on the Sarah portal, and I'm going to kind of scope out their their gear. So Bandos, but an Abyssal Dagger. Void Waker, Torva's good. We don't know what the bunny has, but he's a low level. So most of these people, to me, look like they're AFKers. So let's check out the Zami portal. So this team is looking a little bit better, but we'll wait a couple minutes and check the other team again. So the other way we know that a team is generally good is if you can't get in the portal. But if you just stay spam clicking, the closer we get to the game, the more people are going to go to the other portal, so you'll be able to get in. Alright, now we can see the gear of these guys is pretty good. Yeah, okay, so this is probably the winning team. A method that is slightly more click intensive is just to bring an alt, and you can do this on any world, it can be non-members or a member world, and just play against yourself. You don't need a certain amount of people, so put your alt on the other team of you, and just score on your alt one time, and you can AFK on both your main account and your alt. This has the side effect of your alt getting a third of the tickets as well, so your alt will always lose and get one ticket, and you'll always win and get three tickets. So you could get some collection logs on your alt as well, I guess. If it gets really slow at work, you could even decide to play the game if you wanted to. There are 39 collection log slots for the Castle Wars. The most expensive one is the yellow plate body. It costs 800 tickets. Castle Wars, luckily though, you can sell everything back for a full credit. So once you get the most expensive thing, you can just sell it back and buy every single slot. So you get 39 log slots for 800 tickets. This is my current work from home grind. You just go in and you're going to take a full inventory of buckets from this table. Fill up those buckets at the water pump, go up to the ladder, and you're going to empty all these buckets into the hopper. You can see as I empty the buckets into the hopper, my contribution is going up. It goes up one per bucket, so it can go up to 100. How much contribution you get is how many pieces of eight you'll get. So after you do 100 buckets of water, you'll get 100 pieces of 8, and then it caps from there. As you can see, now that we're at 100 contribution, the more water I deposit in, it doesn't change anything. So after you deposit 100 buckets of water, you can just AFK. You will want to be on world 304, but there are 30 collection logs to obtain from here. You'll need a little less than 40,000 pieces of 8 to obtain everything. The forestry log is technically 12 slots, but I'm only going to consider it as an 8 slot log because I think most people will get the lumberjack outfit from temple trekking. 
If you have any bank standing skills, it's a good idea to do it in Sears Bank on one of the forestry worlds. Additionally, you can join the Root CC channel. People will tend to call out Root events or other Bark events that you can do. If you want to buy everything except the Lumberjack outfit, you will need 38,000 Bark, 1,040 Oak Logs, 1,340 Maples, 1,340 Willows, 740 Teaks, 740 Mahogany, 1,040 Yews, 740 Arctic Pines, 740 Magic, 740 Redwood, 45 Steel Nails, 2 Rope, 3 Addy Bars, 1 Thread, and a Leather. You can reduce this cost though. You can sell back the funky log to lower the cost of the animal bark by 12,000 and each log needed by 400. You can also sell back the log basket, but it's a pretty, pretty handy item for AFKing Redwoods to help with the beaver pet. If you want to prioritize events, struggling saplings and the rising root events give the most anima bark. A lot of people think you need to just kill mithril dragons to complete these 26 slots, but here's a pretty AFK or work from home method to get a green log on this. In the ancient caverns, there are these skeletons you can rummage. They have a 1 in 12 chance to give you a random ancient page. Some of the other things that can happen is you get a skeleton that fights you or you take a little bit of damage. So just bring some food with you and rummage this skeleton. After you've been near these guys for 10 minutes, they won't be aggressive to you anymore. I make sure to have the NPC aggression timer on just so I can see this line and I don't accidentally step over and reset the aggro. After you rummage the skeleton, make sure you have your quick hop set up so you can just switch through the worlds very quickly, like this. Then whenever you get a second at work, just rummage the skeleton. If a skeleton does spawn, you can kill him and you'll have an additional chance for an ancient page at a 1 in 25 rate, or you can run and hide behind this stalagmite until you can hop. I usually just kill them though with protect melee on. When rummaging the skeletons, you have a pretty high chance to take damage. This damage is calculated at 4 plus a small percentage of your HP. Because of this, it's good to stay at low HP, but not below 5, so staying somewhere between like 5 and 10 HP would be ideal if you can manage it. The more food you bring with you, the longer you'll be able to stay. If you have an excess of brews, you could also bring those and pretty much stay here the whole day. This one is very easy. All you need is a big net, and you can get 3 collection logs. If you haven't done the Barbarian training, you'll need a Harpoon as well. The spot with the uh, net and the Harpoon spot is where you can fish shark and get the big shark. The big net spot is where you will catch bass fish, so you can get the big bass from this spot. The spot with the cage and the Harpoon is where you can get the big swordfish from. Going for these three big fish will also net you quite a few clue scrolls passively, as well as a decent chance at the heron pet. I know what you're thinking, isn't LMS that super sweaty one tick six way switch simulator? I mean, at the end sometimes. I've often AFK'd this at work. 90% of the time you start next to a bot, so just click on him and enjoy the free points. You usually don't have to eat or anything, and a lot of the time they don't even turn on prayer, so you'll get a free kill. It's your choice if you want to loot the chest or not, it doesn't affect your points. I usually do it just for a better chance of surviving a little bit longer. After you do that, find a corner of the map to hide in and wait for everyone else to kill each other. As the fog comes in, you might want to move a little bit more towards the arrow. And don't feel bad if you die early on, you can usually just restart the fight. The goal is just to get one kill, or two kills if there's an extra bot like there was this time and then just wait until like the top 10 kills. If you want to try to practice your PvP skills, you can, but if you, the quicker you die, the quicker you can get into the next game for more points. So just for AFKing that, I got two points, and it didn't take too long at all. And then you can just go right back in. I've noticed the bots usually run on the Australian worlds. Jagex usually disables the Australian worlds every other week, 
So when they're open, try and take advantage of them, of just getting a kill, or even two if there's an extra bot near you, and then waiting it out. We can extra tell that this guy's a bot, because he came to a common hiding spot. So, why don't we just do this? They usually don't pray, and they usually just hide somewhere. This is why I think it's a decent AFK. I've clicked maybe 10 times this whole round, and I'm already in the top 5. So I'm gonna get a few points, and I haven't had to do anything. I've been working this whole time, I haven't done a single thing. I could even probably get an additional point, because I think this guy's a bot if I just went over and shot him. Not switching his prayers, not eating, just standing there. These are free kills. Sometimes the bots are programmed to switch their prayers or equipment style after like 10 seconds. Um, but it's nothing too quick and it's really easy to keep up with. However, it looks like this bot is one of those sit there and dies. So now I've gotten three kills and I'm in the top four. Once you get three kills, you get a bonus point. And if you're in third or fourth place, which I'm guaranteed at this point, you get three points. So right now, just from AFKing at work, I'm at four LMS points without having to do anything. I could stand in the fog and just tank it so nobody finds me until I die, or I could run closer hoping a couple people kill themselves. Um, so just killing that one guy, which wasn't really a fight, might have guaranteed me the win because so many bots are in here. Nobody's at the entrance. So it might just, sometimes the bots stay on the edge of the map and just spam eat. <laughs> I'm going to call LMS 26 collection log slots. It's actually 32, but some of these capes you need upwards of a thousand wins, so I'm just denying all the capes. Even though, even with just that easy round, I would have at least got the first cape, which was pretty free. But still, ignoring all these capes. To get the 26 log slots, you need 1,546 points because you can sell back some of the items like the Deadman items and the Halos. That being said, if you do eventually go for green log in this content, you'll need 1,000 wins, which will get you enough points to buy everything no matter what. With the new star change that recently got implemented, this one is so easy. You can either go into the Star Mining friend chat, or they have a Discord that's very, very nice. It will tell you where the star is, you go, click, and enjoy 10 minutes of AFK. There are two collection logs here. They cost 3,000 and 2,000 Stardust respectively. One is the Star Fragment, and one is the Ring. If you get the Star Fragment first, you can sell it back for 2.4 thousand dust and buy the Ring. So really, to finish this collection log, you only need 3,000. Pest Control is technically 10 slots, but I'm only going to consider 2 slots because I figure if you're at the point of grinding collection logs, you already have the rest of Void and you just left the Seal and the Mace alone. With the Hard Combat Diaries done, you get 8 points a game for the Veteran Boat. The Seal and the Mace together only cost 260 points, so once you're in the game, just click a few monsters each game, and you'll be done with this grind in 33 games. You can even just stand in the middle and click all of these shifters that teleport here. I clicked maybe 10 times that game, and I got 8 commendation points. Cam does what? That's right, this low-level quest area is hiding 10 collection log slots. And all of them are super mindless and AFK. Let's look at the map. We've got the Golem Workshop, the Mines, and the Fishing Spots. These are the main important parts, as well as the Vault you can get some RNG boosts from. Killing the Golems can give us part of the Mace, the Mace Guard. You can use a small net or a big net on the Fishing Spots, and this is where we're going to get the Mace Handle. Mining the Baronite Rocks will get us Baronite Deposits, and we can crush these deposits at the Crusher and get the Mace Head, the Hammer, and all of the drops that have Ancient in the name. Most people kind of dread this grind, but it's actually really chill if you just do it in the background and click every now and then while working. You don't really have to pay attention, you just click on the squares and you can get a lot of work done. This is another super chill one. 
Just make sure you have something like 25 bellows in your inventory and you have the chompy hunter plugin turned in. Uh, make sure you just inflate three frogs, you can't inflate more than that. And then just place them around and wait. Because of the Chompy Hunter plugin, it'll tell us when there's a Chompy bird in the area. This isn't click intensive, it just happens in the background. So it's very nice to do while you're at work. As you can see, my screen's flashing, so I'm just gonna shoot the highlighted birds. And then I'm just gonna, whenever I need to, just place a frog down. You can pluck them for the extra pet chance if you want, but I would recommend just killing them. Who doesn't want this cutie on their back? Sit back, respond to some mean emails from your boss, and enjoy these Ape Atoll jams. Alright, this one makes me a little bit uncomfortable. We're going to bring some ingredients to this place put them in this symbol of life, we create this weird chimera and then immediately take their lives and with any luck we can steal a satchel that they for some reason have. I don't know why Spideens have tea flasks. The trophy drops from Slayer monsters can all be farmed off task. And most of the Slayer monsters have other uniques as well, such as light or dark mystic pieces to help you complete the collection log. The Tazar log takes a pretty long time, but if you have the Venator bow and stand around this area, you can basically AFK most of it. All you have to do is pray melee and attack a couple things. The monsters are pretty clustered, so after you, they'll start just bouncing off each other. The mages, even though you're praying melee, can still hit you, but they generally, with your range gear, don't do that much damage. But Either way, just bring a couple shark just in case things get out of hand. These three mining gloves are very AFK. You just come to this place and start mining. Super simple. Each time you successfully mine one, you have a 1 in 20 chance to get unidentified minerals, and you only need 240 of those unidentified minerals to get all three gloves. Make sure to bring a chisel with you so you don't have to bank. You can either make it into arrow tips or dart tips to make this pretty efficient. Some people like to finish Tithe Farm pretty quickly and do like 20 or 25 plants at a time, and if I'm playing the game, I'll do 20 at a time, but while I'm working from home, I just take it nice and easy and I do 8 plants at a time. I don't have to focus at all, just click it when it's ready, and with only 8 plants at a time, you don't have to click it too often. This allows me to complete Tithe Farm without really having to interact with anything. I do it in this circle method so it's really brain dead instead of the zigzag, because this way I end up right where I started and I just keep going in a circle. I've got good chunks of break in between doing stuff to finish up my work on the side. Make sure you make your life extra chill by bringing Lunars with the Humidify spell. It'll automatically fill up all your watering cans when you cast it, and if you bring a Tome of Fire and a Staff of Water, then the only thing you're really using is Astral Runes, which are pretty cheap. Before I tell you all about the secret method to get hundreds of collection log slots, please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And without further ado, the secret method to get hundreds of collection logs that most people are too scared to admit. Common sick. 23 cock stops with the front home. I got the flu and get coming. 500 kit. AFK. Like the video. The syllabus is completing a log from home. Get the inferno, I'm getting that dough!